Young Gigi vs Toyotaro Part 2. Yes, I have finally got around to making it, and this time I'll be comparing mainly poses slash perspective, anatomy, and their battle sequences. Now, I actually decided to cut the fight scene side out and include it in a future video because you see, originally I was thinking about discussing their storytelling ability as well in this video and using their work in both versions of their Dragon Ball AF manga. However, I realized that is really a separate video and topic in and of itself and obviously I would have included a comparison of their fight scenes and which one held more emotional weight and were better overall, but I realized I could still talk about the fights from an artistic standpoint rather than getting into the story elements. However, there are 19 volumes that Young Gigi has done, and well, I would like to first read before ever making a comparison between the two versions of Dragon Ball AF, and at the moment I've only finished reading 7 volumes so far, and have finished reading all of Toyotara's content, which is about 4 volumes I believe. But there is still a lot of reading left to do and I don't really have the time at the moment so that video will be in the future but it is a long way away. And also as I said last time I respect both these guys and enjoy any content they put out so I hope the comment section is somewhat civil which I believe it mostly was last time and once again share your thoughts and comments on these two guys but enough of my rambling and let's get into it. So while in both of Young Gigi and Toyotara's work in Dragon Ball AF, once again I feel that the quality of artwork would go to Young Gigi, but that doesn't mean that Toyotara's work is instantly bad. A matter of fact, when looking at both of their work in the first few volumes, well because Toyotara only did up to four complete volumes, or Toyable, at the time I feel included a lot more different perspectives and angles that I had never really seen these characters portrayed in before. Toyotaro really seems to be more experimental in some respect than young Gigi and likes to display his characters in really dynamic positions. For example, with these images of Zykor, which I believe is the correct way to say his name, I hope, Toyotaro draws him in these really beautiful low angle shots as Zykor desperately tries to push against a combined key blast. And then on the next page, he positions the camera again in a nice low angle shot known as the Worms View, positioned directly behind Zykor in the final moments of the scene, really conveying his vulnerability and desperation as his death seems almost imminent. And here is a cool scene of Pycon drawn right above Goku again with some beautiful perspective with the camera positioned down low as Pycon springs into the air once again presenting Goku as somewhat vulnerable. And there is a beautiful kick Pycon does launching his leg right into the viewer's face with his body in his pivoted angle giving impact and speed while also creating interest to turn the next page. And in Toyotaro's newer work he continues to really display characters in dynamic positions with this classic one of Goku with this high angle perspective as he leaps forward which is quite a different pose I've never actually seen Goku drawn in before which makes it feel fresh and unique. Again, I haven't really seen many Dragon Ball artists, well recent anyway, draw Goku in this way before. Whereas young Gigi seems to play it a little bit more safe and doesn't draw characters in as many dynamic poses as Toyotaro, but that doesn't mean all the work he does is just basic at basic eye level either. For example, take this panel of Ice Freezer's son as he leaps to Vegeta, or this amazing entrance Trunks makes by kicking Marble right in the back with a tilted high angle shot, giving further intensity and speed to this attack. And right after it, there was a nice overhead shot of Marble. And I guess a better example of what I was trying to explain before in regards to poses can be seen when comparing some of their cover art. And again, my point isn't how cool each cover looks or the anatomy. It's purely how original and more so how unique the perspectives are that they use. Now here, I love both pieces, especially this one of Vegeta, which is quite a unique pose and a cool looking one at that. Absolutely beautiful, but I hope you can understand my point overall when looking at Toyotaro's cover art in regards to poses, how he is just a little bit more dynamic and a little more original in a sense. All these additional pages here of the gods and the angels, which are absolutely gorgeous. For example, you have this nice high angle shot of Sawa as he leaps forward, or this drawing of Hellas pushing off her left leg to the side as she readies her bow. Although if Toyotaro had just drawn her with both legs on the ground just standing still and just did a little overhead shot, it wouldn't have had the impact or the motion this illustration conveys. By putting the various body parts in different positions, it really, again, creates something that's unique but also really fluid. 
So overall, with perspective and poses, especially in originality, I think Toyotaro is the better one. But once again, that doesn't mean young Gigi's work is boring or he never uses cool perspective shots, because he definitely does. But Toyotaro just seems to be a bit more consistent in always doing something completely different. Now with Anatomy, let's first start with both their earlier works in Dragon Ball AF. And with Toyotaro overall, it isn't too bad, but there are some oddities like, like Oob's Fist, which is really small here. Especially when the object is technically closer to the camera, it should be bigger. But that's really just a small thing and literally has no impact or takes away from this page. But there are some more like with Goten's bicep being a little small here and the West Kai with quite a large head compared to her body. Vegeta's bicep pointing down, Goku's neck looking a little odd again. And while we're on the topic of necks, Toyotaro does have this habit when analyzing his work again of making characters' necks a little large and disfigured again. Not always, but it is something that pops up here and there. But I never actually noticed the majority of the ones I just listed off actually when reading the manga itself. And therefore, it didn't really affect the story or my enjoyment. I only noticed them when I was initially looking for a fault, but one I definitely did notice while reading and was a little jarring was this classic one of Android 17, which speaks for itself. And this one a Zyko with really small shoulders and a bit of a large neck. But these examples I have collected is out of four volumes worth of work, and your typical page is usually fine and fairly well drawn with little anatomy problems here and there, but nothing major except for that one of Android 17 and Zyko. But the main thing I will mention is, is the artwork would have benefited if his line work included a different variation of width instead of drawing a lot of stuff with just the same thickness and drawing the characters a bit more on model to how Toriyama would draw them. But at the end of the day, I still really enjoyed my read regardless. But in Dragon Ball Super, his anatomy is much better. The cast also looks a bit closer to Toriyama's work now and his line work has improved and it's a lot harder to find mistakes. But there are still some, of course, again with the next at time. But when you compare some of these mistakes in contrast to all the good work he has done throughout all the 10 volumes he has worked on so far of Dragon Ball Super, they are quite minuscule from my perspective. Now, one misconception is that I have seen some complaints about the necks looking broken in some of his artwork, but I don't think many people realize that a human being can stick out their neck pretty far, and therefore I don't see it as bad anatomy. Now, with Young Gigi, I'll be honest, I took a quick look through the first volume and tried to reach into my memory of when I read the seven volumes, and honestly, I couldn't find any glaring examples of really bad anatomy. Overall, the quality of his artwork, and not only that, but to how close it replicates Toriyama's, is top tier. There was this one of Piccolo, which looked a little off model, and there was this other one here, but seriously, I had a really hard time trying to find anything that I could confidently say is bad. Now, there is probably an example that I could have missed, possibly, but for the meantime, overall, I can confidently say that he is much better overall anatomy-wise. Now with battles, let's continue on with Young Gigi. So with battles, I would say that his sequences are alright. And for example, let's look at this one of Ice, I think it's pronounced, and Vegeta. So Ice launches forward and then right after launches a nice punch right onto Vegeta, which has a nice impact frame and is drawn well. Now Vegeta slides back and puts his hand on his jaw, then Ice appears and there is this beautiful shot of Vegeta as he launches up into the air. Ice launches up after and exchanges some punches in the air and knocks Vegeta down again. And one of my favorites so far of Gohan Super Saiyan 5, punching Ice square in the gut then right in the face again with a good amount of speed lines being used and not too many panels. Ice then tries to recover right before Gohan kicks him right in the face, then draws back his punch and sends him flying then thereafter powers up although when you look at several volumes worth of battles things can get a little repetitive and what I mean by this is that usually like here for example a fused version of marble punches Gotenks and launches into the air then smacks Gotenks down and there is a big explosion and the same process kind of repeats itself over and over like they chuck some key blast and vanish behind each other and then deliver a kick etc and it's beautifully drawn and all and impactful but it is stuff that we haven't seen a lot of before and the artwork and perspective wise can look similar and after a volume or two you kind of do crave to see something fresh and new and I did get that feeling 
and satisfaction when reading the next volume though number seven when goten is fighting super Wu. i'm not going to pronounce that long and so goten leaps forward and clashes with the dragon and the dragon goes for a punch goten drops and then there is this nice shot of goten blocking a kick goten then swiftly returns a punch which is then blocked then avoids another punch and tries the dragon guy whose name i can't say again and does a kamehameha which is then deflected and Goten launches back and the dragon guy blocks. Goten ducks and then puts his hand on the ground, does this lovely kick into the dragon, which is not only a gorgeous angle, but it's something I've never really seen before in Dragon Ball content. It feels unique and which is one reason why I really enjoyed this little sequence. It's not just your basic eye level shot, Anyway, the dragon grabs Goten's leg and throws him in the air and tries to finish him with the Key Blast attack. And what made this panel feel better, or should I say this sequence, was it tried to use some different perspectives I hadn't seen before as I said, and had a lot more sequences involving blocking, returning a punch, then ducking again, instead of just vanishing behind someone and getting a punch or kicking, then crashing to the ground, etc. And when looking at some of Toriyama's work, you can get a better example of what made classic Dragon Ball fights so entertaining and always managing to capture your attention with the classic battle of Goku vs Mercenary Tao. So you have this stare down, then Mercenary Tao comes forward, Goku blocks a kick, then blocks another punch by raising his knee, then does this beautiful kick which conveys speed but the panel is clean and it's easy to see what's going on. Then Mercenary Tao recovers, gets angry and again charges in. Goku leaps backward into the air. Mercenary Tao follows and leaps into the air and knocks Goku backwards. But Goku quickly recovers and launches back. Then knocking Mercenary Tao. Then does his bounce off the ground. Draws back his kick in anticipation. And then strikes kicking Mercenary Tao with precision into the ground. Now why was this small sequence so good? Well once again it included a heap of different perspectives. Elevating the fight and retaining interest. And had a lot of going back and forth between fighters and also Goku used the environment around him making the scene furthermore intriguing rather than just a typical battle in the air and although of course Goku couldn't fly at this time regardless when characters could later in the series Toriyama still delivered fight after fight and was always doing something interesting with perspectives and the way he arranged the sequences. And again, looking at some of Young Gigi's newer work, such as Dragon Ball Dream Match, which was a collaboration with another artist, but you can still see the principles of what I mentioned before applied fairly well in this volume, with Goku putting out some punches, Goku Black blocks, and Goku sweeps his leg across with Goku Black going backwards. But Goku still manages to duck and then hits with a punch and a kick and disappears for an instant. Then the fighting continues again, etc. And so there was a bit more going back and forth and not a heavy reliance on Key Blast 24-7, making the battle a bit more interesting. But one main criticism I have with Young Gigi's fight scenes is how especially in his earlier volumes specifically, he seems to copy the manga in some pages panel for panel and I don't think there is any problem with referencing at all. After all, a lot of people don't understand how hard it is to come up with fights and do a manga in general drawing in someone else's art style. But referencing the exact pose with extremely little variation and having the same panels arranged exactly the same way does take away from the immersion because it's stuff you've already seen before and it doesn't feel original and the thing is he does this with the page previous and does it several more times like with this one of Gotenks which again at first was kind of a cool tribute but the fact that each panel underneath was exactly the same again it took away from the immersion and reduce the impact and severity of this scene because it kind of felt like a knockoff. Now the thing is you can do a tribute or reference without copying every little bit as I said there is nothing wrong with referencing a scene but at least try to change it up a bit and it's better not to reference the entire page panel for panel like for example of a reference scene but doesn't feel like a straight copy is where Jiren is being punched by Goku however he is on a different angle Goku also has his arm down and has a completely different facial expression so it looks a little different and doesn't feel really like a ripoff although I don't know if I would have drawn Jiren on the next panel with pretty much the same expression and angle as Piccolo Jr and I think if you actually remove that panel it would have looked better if the last panel was just Goku just to create suspense and to turn the next page and see Jiren's reaction and what's to come next. And I understand that Toyotaro has done his fair share of oopsies in the past, and I'll get to that eventually later in the video. 
Now, with Toyotaro, surprisingly, although his artwork may not have been as good as Young Gigi's, his fights were actually quite good, and I'll be honest, I found some of them slightly more entertaining to read than Young Gigi's, which partly comes down to using a larger variation of poses, making a more interesting read, but let's break down the flow of his combat. So, let's begin with this fight against Zykor. So, Vegeta rushes in, and Zykor blocks. Now, Toyotaro reuses this angle over and over again in later in the Dragon Ball Super manga. However, he uses it like twice from memory in these four volumes, so I will give him a pass. Anyway, then Zyko grins at him. Vegeta is frustrated and comes around for this nice kick to finish off the page, making you want to turn to the next one, which is good use of the Hikigoma, which is a technique to create suspense in the final panel to encourage the reader to flip the page. Zykor, however, grabs his leg and Vegeta is shocked. Then he pulls Vegeta forward right into his fist, getting a beautiful punch in. Vegeta staggers, then Zykor picks Vegeta up by the hair. Then Zykor throws him in the air and reaches back with a key blast right above Vegeta. A beautiful panel once again and prepares to throw it when Gohan quickly turns into Super Saiyan 4. Zykor hits Vegeta with the blast. Gohan quickly reacts by doing a Kamehameha, knocking the key blast away from Vegeta. Vegeta hits the ground hard and tries to recover from the aftermath of this attack. Zykor then appears above him, stamps his head into the ground. Zykor taunts the others provoking Trunks to enter into the fight. Zykor easily dodges Trunks' attack then there is this nice shot looking down on Zykor preparing to pummel Trunks, really making Trunks feel vulnerable and in danger, all while building further anticipation for what's to come on the next page. Trunks tries to block but gets hit hard with Toyotaro, yet again putting characters such as Zykor here in some different perspectives, giving further freshness to this fight. Anyway, Trunks then goes into a bunch of rocks then, then just as he is about to recover, Zykor is already there, preparing to blast him away with the camera angle looking from Trunks' perspective, looking up at Zykor, instilling fear for the character. But then suddenly on the next page, Gohan rushes out and lands a clean blow onto Zykor, then they go back and forth with some punches, Gohan goes for a kick, but Zykor knocks him into the air, which I believe is actually taken from a picture of Gohan vs. Cell. But anyway, Gohan quickly bounces back, then they both power up, and that sequence ends for the time being. So with that sequence, there was a lot more depth to the combat. There was a good use of perspectives. The characters exchanged blows back and forth, and it had very good pacing. There was also this one image that I saw at least there, which I believe was taken from the manga, which is Gohan getting launched into the air by Zyko, but it wasn't a whole entire page, so I wasn't too worried about it. And with Toyotaro's newer work with his battle sequences, they're still really entertaining to look at for all the reasons I've just stated, especially with his improved artwork. But he seems to use too many panels in the Dragon Ball Super manga, and is actually a stark contrast to his earlier work of what I've just discussed in Dragon Ball F. It's kind of odd how he went backwards in this regard, especially when it actually saves time to draw less panels, although in recent chapters in regards to the Tournament of Power and this whole Galactic Patrol Prisoner arc, he has eased it up with the panels and as a result is much easier and more enjoyable to read his work. Regardless, I still find his newer fights still well paced and interesting, still using a wide variety of perspectives in his work. Although in Tournament of Power, he did reuse the same angle, this one here, over and over again, which did get a bit boring seeing it. So overall conclusion, through the research process and creation of this video, my thoughts for young Gigi are that his artwork and anatomy wise, he is excellent. I had a hard time trying to find any bad artwork in his manga, proving how hardworking and talented he is to have got to this stage in his career. His line work is good and replicates Toriyama as well, and also characters are fairly well on model. He definitely does include a good range of perspectives in his work, however, a good amount of his angles and poses we have seen before, and after several volumes, it can get quite redundant, which can lead to a lack of interest at times when reading his work. He also references several scenes pretty much the exact same as they appeared in the manga with little to no change. It sometimes does an entire page. However, in later volumes, this is quite rare and isn't much of a problem. And especially in his newer work, it's almost non-existent. His fight scenes once again are drawn beautifully and have a lot of impact due to his good use of speed lines. However, in earlier work, I feel that they could get overused just a little bit too much, and some of his panels would have benefited from having a better balance of white space. For example, Toriyama wouldn't use any speed lines at all in certain panels, just to emphasize an attack, but also not to oversaturate the page, allowing the viewer to just grasp everything. 
but this is a small thing once again, and his newer work, the panels feel really well balanced in this regard, so it isn't too much of a problem. The actual fights are fun to read due to a good use of angles and action sequences, involving characters exchanging a variation of kicks, punches, and key blasts, but can feel somewhat repetitive over time due to the same angles still being used, and fight sequences following a similar pattern to the previous chapters. However, this doesn't stop the viewer from outright enjoying his read, but can dampen the potential of otherwise one of the best Dragon Ball fan mangas out there. Equally, there are volumes that really stood out there, such as Volume 7, for all the reasons I've stated in regards to the fight portions of this video. And as I said, I haven't read all the volumes out there, so I'm very confident there are many great fights yet to find. Now, Toyotaro Anatomy Wise was good, although he still had a decent amount of out of proportion pictures in his earlier work. However, I never felt that it hindered my enjoyment of his telling of. Dragon Ball AF and in his newer work, these problems with anatomy etc are still found here and there but overall are a rarity. Perspective and the angles he portrays characters in are excellent, they make his work feel fresh and new and kept me interested and never once did I feel bored while reading his work. This also assisted in elevating the tension and intensity in scenes and actually inspired me in my own artwork. Fights, once again, due to his good use of perspectives, they prevented the battle from giving him that feeling of Meh, I've already seen this before, and he had fairly clean panels in his earlier work, making reading an enjoyable experience, although he could have used thicker lines to provide more intensity to some scenes, and this is also something that could be still applied in the current DBS manga, however it is a small thing once again. He does however use more panels as I stated before in the Dragon Ball Super manga, especially in the earlier parts of the series, however in both the previous arc and current arc I believe this hardly isn't as much of a problem anymore, and also as stated before his battle sequences had a lot of going back and forth between characters, made good use of the environment around, but even looking at some fights from the Tournament of Power which I hadn't read yet until this part of the video, the characters also engage each other using other combat techniques other than just punching and kicking, such as Kefla flicking backwards and grabbing Gohan with the legs, then flinging him away, then leaps into the air and lands directly on Gohan. The majority of his fights, especially this little one, felt fresh and unique once again and overall had a good balance of how he used effects and speed lines and doesn't clutter the page too much. Although one small complaint is that he did reuse that one angle over and over again in the Tournament of Power, but it isn't a huge problem and he does use references from the manga, however there is nothing wrong with referencing obviously, however referencing the following panels underneath can take you out of the story because it feels like a cheap knockoff as I said previous. However when Toyotaro does reference, he doesn't usually do the entire page and Changes up the scenes such as Goku vs Beerus here, which looks entirely different and looks hardly anything like the original picture, except that both are kicking up in the air, although scenes like this are a little too close and should probably be changed up. But overall, when you look at both Young Gigi and Toyotaro in a counter-referencing, when comparing it to literally hundreds of chapters of their original content they have put out, the few scenes they have directly referenced with little to no change are quite minuscule in comparison. And yes, it was that time Toyotaro traced that image, which was wrong of course, but once again, thankfully that was one instance, and I don't think we should write out all the content he has put out because of it. However, if it was something that occurred quite frequently throughout every chapter, well, that might change things. But anyways, thank you for watching this video, and I actually wasn't really a massive fan of Toyotaro before this video, and favoured young Gigi a lot more, and felt that he probably should have been doing the DBS manga, but as I've read both their versions of Dragon Ball AF and a bit more of the Dragon Ball Super manga, I could start to see why Toriyama picked him, and looking at his work, especially the Kefla vs Gohan fight, really made me feel like drawing at that moment and getting back to my own fan manga, which is a feeling I only often get while reading Toriyama's work, so I am thankful for that. I still like Young Gigi's style more overall, but I absolutely love the way Toyotaro constructs a fight and just a fresh feeling they have, as well as all the multiple perspectives he uses. Of course, Young Gigi definitely has his fair share of great fights. I also tried to really improve the quality of editing in this video, as you may be realized, as I do want to put a larger focus on this channel and try and upload more to really get it going. But my main focus is drawing at the moment, so I figure maybe if I can't find more time to make heaps of videos, I could at least overhaul the quality of the content I do release. And if you have any suggestions for videos you might want me to cover in the future, this part 2, which is somewhat a result of that, leave it in the comments and I will see you next time.